If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Hey, in this episode of Mind Pump, uh, I kind of dig into Adam a little bit and find out why he decided to become a bro again. Yeah. Or is he? You'll find out in this episode. We also talk about signs of when you know you're training too hard. Yes, it is possible. You can train too hard, and it will halt your progress. You don't we- train when you're hard. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Yeah, uh, we cover that in this upcoming episode. We also talk about uh, how I'm overcoming some gut issues and what I'm doing with my nutrition. Um, by the way, if you want to follow Adam's journey, uh, what I like to call the bro journey, um, mm. you'll find it on his Instagram page at Mind Pump Adam. Swole path. He's showing his nutrition. He's tracking his exercise. Uh, you might want to download Fat Secret app and follow along. Lastly, uh, we've got one of the most exciting promotions uh, we've ever had going on now. And part of it is we know we have a lot of new listeners coming in from some of the other podcasts that we've been featured on more recently. We have a starter bundle. Um, it's the great, it's the best way you can get started in MAPS programming. And what it includes is MAPS Anabolic, which is what we consider our foundational program. It also includes uh, nutrition and fasting guides to help you with your diet and also learn how to use fasting for health properly. You also get access to our forum for free and yeah. MAPS Prime, which has a self-assessment tool so you can correct imbalances. All these things are deducted at like over half price. You can find this at mindpumpmedia.com. Justin. Whoa. Justin, I have, to, ta- I have to talk to you about something. Adam, I need you to cover your ears. Please. Okay. We have talk a, to me. Me and Justin have a real quick conversation. <clears throat> Is this about last night? Bro, uh, we may be in the midst of... Uh, the bro version of Adam. Whoa. Yeah, I think he's, um, I think he went back. <laughs> back to the old. He got pulled. He got, yeah. Pulled he, back to the I think you're actually out. getting it's the wrong guy side. to try. God and, damn I it. Getting, I told you not to listen. <laughs> I think you're getting the wrong guy to try and team up with you. Sorry. I told you not to listen. <laughs> I think you're Son alone alone on this one, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I've been kind of flirting with uh, a little bit of darkness <laughs> myself. Dar- <laughs> darkness. Yeah. Well, there's the darkness. It's, uh, it's, I'm just teasing you. Uh, how many meals did you bring with you today? Uh, I brought two. Uh, that's all I really. Oh, need. Well, that's not. That's not two. That's not. That's uh. Well, I really don't. In the middle. I really don't need to bring five or six. I'm not here beyond three, four o'clock. So, and I'll probably eat one meal out. And what are you so, eating in your meals? Uh, those. That one's exactly the same. So it's got. Um, it's a stir fry that I had yesterday. That I made yes or Katrina made yesterday. So it's leftover from that. So it's basically just a, a chicken stir fry with a chili paste. And, oh, that's delicious. Um, it's got asparagus, spinach, bell pepper, mushroom, all that stuff inside of it with chicken and and then white rice. So I got that's about, that's fantastic. Mm. I like your Insta story last night. <clears throat> what part? Where you were trying to be a dick to everybody. <laughs> Where do I, I was I was crunchy fuck, hippie fuck asshole. this fuck yeah. this oh. hippie shit. Oh yeah. Everybody, I'm not a hippie. I'm so buff. Watch. I <laughs> it's uh I think uh, we've had this tone for quite some time now and I think there's been a lot of good that's came from it. I think it's been uh, a good message coming from guys that are in the in the fitness industry and we're not we're the opposite I think of what a lot of people do. But then I also think that there's some balance with that because not everybody has this ability to be intuitive eating and training and doing all that. And there's steps to, that lead to that. And even myself, somebody who's been doing this for as long as I have been, you know, right away, first thing I noticed when I was tracking that, it's never, no matter what I say and how for sure I think I know until I actually put it in and I actually look at it, I'm never right on. And I'm always off somewhere and my body isn't getting. I ideally what it needs and you know instantly once I start to oh yeah balance is important but look, you, you said fuck the hippie crunchy shit like as if you as if you're denouncing <laughs> balance you know what I mean or was that was no that no, just no theatrics no, no. Yeah. the hippie crunchy bullshit it would be the extreme is what it what what that means oh okay. so that wouldn't that wouldn't be like all of a sudden I'm, I'm deciding I'm not going to meditate or work on my breathing or do mobility or yoga like all that stuff is awesome and I think important. Mm. But what our, was, what's our, the part that you're fucking? 
it's the it's the everything we talk about is that we've gotten away from talking about macros and and building and and, and going after it like that. So it's oh, the, yeah. it's the and other intensity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, all yeah. those. So that's been a focus of mine like late, lately too. Like I I feel the same I feel the same sort of pull because I've been voicing against it for so long because it's been it's been a focal point for decades for me, you know, and so getting away from it was really revolutionary. And now, you know, coming back into it with a more integrative approach is something that I definitely want to uh, express. And, you know, going through this process too, like, it's one of those things like, you kind of start to see how uh, all these techniques bleed in and they benefit um, you know, that portion of training that is the sexier portion of training. And I remember a question, like somebody asked, uh, I don't know if it was on a quad or like on the forum, but they asked like, you know, do you guys even really follow your, your maps programs? Are you guys like, you know, like step-by-step, step, like these, these like workouts you have like laid out and, and to be honest, you know, yes, like I, I have, I have gone through the, the program specifically, but also have, gone in and out and, and explored other options because like this intuitive process kind of leads you into understanding your body, uh, you know, a little bit more and, and, and trying to pursue new techniques and new ways to express movement. And so like, I've been kind of pulled in all these different directions to try and figure out how to sharpen and refine and optimize the process, but I'm getting back to the foundation in the, in the meat and potatoes. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of exciting. Isn't that funny though? That's like the process of learning is like, you, you'll go way over here, mm-hmm. right? And you'll learn that. And then because you're so far in that direction, you get a lot of pitfalls. You, you either overdo it or you start to get negatives as a result of avoiding the other side. And then the learning process will typically bring you way over to the other side. And then you start to bounce back and forth, but each bounce is less extreme until you kind of, you know, well, it's a come little, more towards the middle, I, if you will. It's mm-hmm. To me, I see it more as like a give and take. I mean, someone asked a really good question just the other day on Q&A, and I thought that was a really, really good question. And something that had been on my mind a lot is that no matter how you draw it up and look at it, well, uh, you, there's give and take. You know, if you end up spending so much time in this world, it's going to take away from another part of the world. So understanding, uh, one, uh, what your body needs and what you want, too, is really important. I think that we we stress so much about, like, you know, the average – most people out there are not spending the time doing what they need to be doing for their body, and it seems to be the opposite, right? If you're the extreme hippie crunchy side you probably need a little bit of beast mode in your life and probably need some intensity and probably could be training a little bit harder and be and be a little bit more loose about things and so you know anti everything that it has anything to do with its artificial or processed and it's like all I do is eat my greens and if it didn't come from dirt I refuse to touch it and you know, I think those people can have, uh, have a little bit of flexibility in one direction. And I think the guys that are all extreme hardcore, you know, take everything under the sun to try to build one more pound of muscle on their body or burn one more pound of fat and they're using everything they possibly can and they're hammering the fuck out of their body. Those guys could use some time of meditation and relaxing. So, you know, they, they, you have to give and take a little bit to be in that. And I think that, you know, part of uh, my journey was, you know, heading over to the other side was to embrace all of it, let go. I, I hadn't been on a scale. I hadn't taken a, a, a mirror selfie to kind of like look at where I'm at. I, hadn't done, I haven't measured and weighed anything. I hadn't tracked anything. I hadn't worn my Fitbit. Like I to- totally got rid of everything and said, I'm going to completely embrace this, uh, you know, culture of just intuitive everything. And there was lots of great <clears throat> takeaways to that. But there was a lot of things, too, that I missed um, about tracking. And one of those biggest things for me is just being certain that, okay, I am hitting my targets. And the very first thing that was very glaring to me, and I just brought it up today on my Insta story, was we talk really heavy about the overconsumption of protein. And we push that hard on people because in our experience with bodybuilding, you know, and in that culture, guys are doing three grams of protein and taking two, three shakes and one bar here, another bar there like crazy and overdoing it. So we're trying to be the counter to that culture 
But in reality, for someone like me, I grossly under eat protein. And it, it's... Now, ver- is it because you don't like protein or is it because you you tend to uh, crave or want to eat other macros? I love over? protein. I love meat. But you, you, you got to... So what, re- what is it? What is it then? When you're into... Like when you're not it's, tracking, what well, do you it, think is preventing you from eating the well, optimal? Well, what ex- it's not like there's something preventing. It's it's just my body will... Or my I will naturally gravitate to a carbohydrate over a protein. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm wondering like what it... Like, but even... Like, looking every, back, just what is like it? Four, so a, is it convenient? A, a, nor- a normal day, okay? A normal day, four meals. That's a lot, right? right, right, right. A, a, four meals. I know most of, most of us eat two, three times a day. Sure, so sure. four four meals a day is a, a normal solid day of eating for me. It would be less sometimes too. Sometimes I eat as low as two or three, but mm-hmm. let's say four meals. All four meals, I get a balanced amount of protein. 30 so what, to 50 grams? 30 to 40 grams. No, 50 is a lot. You know, how many, you know how much 50 grams of meat is? Do you actually know how much that is? When you get- That's like 12 ounces, dude. You know, not very few people eat 10 to 20. Now I do some meals, I do get like that. But normally if you go to a- Chipotle or those are four ounce servings, dude. You double it up. That's eight. Mm -hmm. That's only now you're only talking 40 something grams of protein. So do that times four meals. That's one. That's 140 to 160. I'm 220 pounds. That's and that's a good day. That means every single meal I had a good balanced amount of protein. Now say a day where I'm busy. So did you track what you were eating before you were trying to add? So oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, of course. That's what I'm. That's why I'm yeah. saying this. That was the first thing that was. Extreme. What were your total calories around? Oh, my total calories are around twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred, depending on the day. So, are you keeping mm. the calories the same at bumping the protein, or are you so, bumping everything up? You know, like my if you follow my Insta story, you'll see what's going on right now. This first week for me is completely just tracking. Like I'm not trying to follow anything right now. I'm making some subtle adjustments because I've been tracking since last week, and right away I noticed mm-hmm. I was under protein. So the first thing for me is just make sure I'm getting adequate protein every single day. I think that in itself, I'm already seeing my body respond. So that was the first. What, now, are, you, what are you aiming for? Right around 180 to 220. Okay. So you went from like 120, 140 to 180, 220. Yeah. And the calories, are you keeping the same? So, or are they going up from those? Well, so t- yesterday, because I, so Sunday, we went on a big hike. We had a great training session. You know, uh, I didn't have my Fitbit on that day. Katrina had hers. So she was well over 15,000 steps. So that day I consumed like 3,500 calories. Well, yesterday I didn't do any hiking. I did a trigger session for my workout. So my consumption was more like 2,800 calories. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm right now I'm, I'm adjusting according to my movement, but I'm not like, I try and tell people the first like week or two is really just kind of figuring out your caloric maintenance. Like I need to see, you know, what day, now that I don't have Orange Theory or anything outside of that, like those were, I was stepping 15 to 20,000 mm-hmm. steps two days out of the week, plus another uh, two days of the week where I was stepping like 12, 15. Now I'm dropping as low as six, sometimes 8,000 steps in a day. That's that's half the movement. So your goal, So the goal now is to build muscle. You bumped your protein. I'm going to lean out too at the same time. Okay. So uh, so body composition change. Yeah. So what about the scale? Are you trying to move it up or no, keep, stay I wanna, the same? So the goal is always to stay right, especially at the very beginning. Like I'll manipulate the weight later down the road, but but right now, right now it's to just exchange. Is I don't want to. You want to build and get lean. Yes. Okay. So I want to stay the same on the scale. So your calories. So you, the extra fifty to eighty grams of protein is you know another two hundred or two hundred forty, two hundred fifty grams of uh, excuse me, two hundred fifty calories. Is that going to be what I'm saying? Is is that going to be a, extra on your calories? Or are you right. keeping the calories where they a were? Slight surplus. Yeah. Are you going in a slight surplus that with right, the extra protein, or are you lowering something else? Right now, for- right now, what I'm what I'm doing is is getting my my macros at a good balance. And what I mean by that is this: so when I tracked last week, and I was like, I'm not going to try and do anything. I'm just going to see what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Like one of the one of the habits that I had picked up recently was, you know, Chipotle is a, a regular meal that we all eat, right? So uh, when I go there, a lot of times I get my my you know burrito bowl with double meat, and then I would eat it with chips. Well, those chips account for 200 calories of nothing but really carbohydrates, and and I need about 200 more calories of protein. So that that's an example of something that has been dropped off the diet, and now it's been replaced like. So I went over to get, uh, you know, the Vitality shakes the other day, which is just a green smoothie blend, and I had some. You oh, that's know, the one from Whole Foods or whatever. Like that, it's not uh, okay. Whole Foods. But oh, I know which one you're talking about. So, 
and I had some of the, um, you know, organic protein, uh, scooped into that. So I could, so I replaced it with some veggies and, and protein instead of what would those calories probably would be in chips before. Mm. So, or, you, so your calories are roughly the same. Yeah, r- I, the exactly. That's why I, I don't want to lose weight. I don't want to see right. the skin. And, it, and this would be a, an example of me cutting calories would be if all of a sudden I saw the weight, the scale. Now is your dipping. training. What's different about, because I want, uh, no, it's a good question. These and I want to spell this out for no, no, people this is because very, these are all very good questions. Cause you're going to be trying. You're actually going to be, uh, and I hope, I mean, uh, obviously this is something you're putting out there. You're going to be tracking not just your food, but you, you're going to be doing like pictures, right? To show people yeah, I've got what a, changes you can make. Yeah, I've, t- I've, I've taken uh, before pictures and everything and I'll, uh, I'll eventually get everything all posted up for people so they can, so I'm logging everything. So Are people, you doing like a MAPS, you're doing like MAPS aesthetic based programming? Yeah, so MAPS Black is the foundation of what I'm doing, but I do, I'm, I'm also blending it with uh prime and some of our mobility stuff so the black is going to be the foundation oh, of- like the sexy athlete bundle Kind yeah, of like that. Kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Excellent. Kind of like that. Um, and so that's the main that's the main focus. Uh, although there's there'll be little things that I add to that because like yesterday was a trigger blended mobility day together, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. And but for the most part, yeah, maps black is what we're now. For. How has your training? Okay, so for before you were heavily focused on uh, mobility and. You know, you say intuitive eating, but it's it was probably it, I mean more it was geared towards just overall wellness, health, and maintenance. Now you're pushing a little body composition change, mm-hmm. build muscle, burn body fat. You bumped up your pro- protein by about it seems like about forty to eighty grams a day, which you're still up. You're still not in the ridiculous range. You're only probably at one to one um, calories around the same. Training has changed. What was your training like before? Because right now you're doing kind of like sexy athlete bundle where you're doing like, the, yeah. like mostly aesthetic, but adding some so, performance and some pride. Well, this is a good point and a good question also. And I think uh, to caution people, I think what they intend to do right now. And what I want to show people is that you don't want to go from one extreme to the other extreme right out the gates. You don't need to do that. Our bodies are extremely smart. They'll get adapted to whatever you throw at it. And if I throw the whole kitchen sink at it at the very beginning, then yeah, sure, I'll see great change in the first week or two, but then I'll hit a hard plateau. So even even like going into black right now, I'm I'm like letting off if I feel like that's that's more than enough for today mm-hmm. because my volume has been is extremely low. So because I would, there so you're would, slowly going to ramp that up. Yeah. So there'd be weeks where I mean, I I was in the gym always this entire time of intuitive eating and training. I was in the gym every week, three to five times minimum still. But a lot of times I would go, there'd be a week I go to the gym and actually never really hit any iron. About the only thing I never, ever neglected because legs are a priority for me was squatting and dead. So mm-hmm. squatting Plus and dead. Plus they're super functional. Fuck, exactly. should do them Exactly. Again. And that the way I looked at it was yeah. this is going to be a great way to at least maintain a lot of my physique and size by doing those big compound lifts. Then the rest of everything was really built around all the stuff I wanted to fix. And so a lot of mobility, a lot of corrective stretching, a lot of stuff like that, a lot of prime. Uh, a week could go by and that's all I did was squat, deadlift, and then all the rest was prime and mm-hmm. mobility. So now that I'm transitioning over into black, I know black's a lot of volume, and I know I haven't been giving my body that much volume. I don't want to go from one extreme to the other, so I'll follow the structure of it. But then what I will do is, if I I'll bill it tell like, well, this is a lot, you know, if this is way more than any training session that I, you know, way more volume than what I had done, and by volume, so people understand what that means, it's sets, repetition, repetition, and weight. So it's total workload. Yeah, total yeah. workload for for a workout. There's if if I hit a session like today is going to be a great, you know, because yesterday was trigger. So now I'm back to a foundational day today. And if I'm, you know, 40 minutes into it, and I'm not done with my routine, but I know I'm like, I've done way more than I had done anything I did last week. I may cut it off. Mm-hmm. I may shut it down that day because I know I don't need to push the body any, any further than that. Let's see. What's interesting about this, this whole process is, um, I mean, at the end of the day, we've all been uh, in in the fitness industry for a long time, but we're all we all love the uh, the way you can manipulate and change things to change everything from state of mind to your body, how it looks, to how it moves, to you know all these different things, right? Your health, all these all all these factors. And what's really cool is knowing what you know and, and really being aware of how your body's changing is how quickly you can elicit change in your body by being mm-hmm. really smart about I mean you can already I can already tell I could I could tell 
Yeah, you tighten the screws. I could tell last week you started making a little bit of changes mm-hmm. in the way your body looked. Um, and so it's really cool to do. And I think, I mean, all joking aside, you know, I joke around and said you were, you know, being an asshole or whatever on Insta story. And I, th- I just think that's hilarious. But all joking aside, I think what's really cool is uh, being able to uh, have fun with these types of things. And as uh, hosts of a fitness podcast, it kind of keeps your keeps you sharp. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you're able to comment on certain things and talk about certain things as you're experiencing them. And there's going to be people in our audience who want to, you know, who can learn from all the experiences you're going through. Well, it's always I, different. I think it's important to to check ourselves constantly as to our message and and to um, get back to other ways of thinking and and, and express. Um, the way we work out, the way we move and, and pursue other ideas so we don't get stuck in, in, and become dogmatic. Mm-hmm. It, it's, some, it's like everything that we try so hard uh, not to be. Like, and, and I know it's a constant check, isn't it? It is. And, and I mean, the, the human body, it's like every day is, some, is a new challenge. And uh, obviously, you want to get to a point where you become efficient at something. And so when you, when you start to realize you're becoming efficient at, efficient at something, that's really where you need to pursue uh, new stimulus. And so even if it's something like old that we're revisiting, I think it's important that we go through this process again. I oh. think what's funny is that, you know, if you talk about like you know, bodybuilders with big egos, right? Because we talked about this when we were at Paleo FX, uh, you know, bodybuilders with big egos, and they're all about their, you know, their insecurities and their, you know, whatever. You see that on the other side too. You see that with oh, totally. people who are extreme on the I, other I side, whose I, super ego is how, like, I'm so natural. Uh, uh, you know, I'm yeah. so I'm so natural. I walk in the men's bathroom barefoot. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's I, just as pretentious to me. I yeah. thought it was just as pretentious yeah. as the bodybuilding, <laughs> yeah. just different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like it's different, mm-hmm. and I feel like. You, Justin hit it right on the head. I, you know, I've been feeling this for a while now uh, of our our message, and it, it's kind of a bummer because I was really enjoying a lot of the benefits from it myself, and I mm-hmm. think that it was an important move and transition for me. But then, of course, like you said, you know, real quick it can sound dogmatic, and then you know, I even felt that tone on the on the forum, and some people had expressed that, and it's like, listen, just because we are expressing and sharing our story and our journey we're at doesn't mean it's like. We're we we are like super anti dogmatic. Like I do not want to be that way, and I refuse to be in a box. And so I will continue to do this as long as we have a podcast. As soon as somebody starts to fucking think that I'm a certain way, I will switch gears yeah. just because of that. Because I find it's necessary to teach and show that the importance of that. And every time I learn something new about myself and my body, that's the important thing, right? The important thing is to take like the parts that you've learned. Uh, you know, that really have lots of value and mm-hmm. take those Keep and, them, and kind of like bring them. It's almost like you're walking through life with this backpack and you're going to walk and you're going to see certain things. And every once in a while, you should pick something up and put it in that backpack and take it with you. A, an easy example of, uh, of this philosophy is if you look at the, and this is easy, an easy example because people will be able to get it right away too, is uh, if you look at mixed martial arts, the evolution of mixed martial arts really is in taking what works from different fighting styles and utilizing what works in, in combination with other things that work from other martial arts mm-hmm. and making you a complete and effective fighter. And if you look at mixed martial arts and its evolution, man, it, evol- it changes so quickly. I remember it wasn't yeah. that long ago where in MMA they were talking shit about spinning heel kicks and spinning, you know, body kicks and, you know, uh, checking people with kicks real low, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you got some dude who did everything else real well, but he was so good at implementing a couple things that now, you know, you see spinning heel kicks. You see, you know, some of these moves. People are real effective at them. You see how it could be applied and it's deadly. Yeah, so it's really really a a lot like that. And uh, fitness and wellness and health and that whole thing – uh, it's full of pitfalls, and the biggest pitfall has got to be where you your ego steps in, and then you become this like that's all that's what I am, that's all I am, yeah. And you lose the potential positives from all these different things. We talk about it all the time, but we're not immune. 
we're definitely not immune to it. No, oh, no, of, of course. And there's there's a lot of things too that you know I, I notice. I mean, I'm curious to see, you know, when when as I go through this transition for me, on uh, things that I have found very important to my life uh, that I don't want to lose. For example, um, you know, part of this whole intuitive e- eating, all this thing like that, awareness, and you know, I've also attached, you know, the meditation, the breathing the, um, reading, like I'm knocking a, you know, one to two books out every month. Like there are certain things I've been doing incredible amounts of work on mobility and stretching. Like I don't want to lose a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I do know, like I said earlier that there's always give and take a little bit when, you know, you, you, it's going to be tough for me to live in both worlds completely. And so already in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, practices that I want to put in place. So I keep my mobility while I start to build some size on me mm-hmm. and I don't stop knocking out, you know, a book plus a month and I don't stop meditating and things like that. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I put some things in place that allow me to still stay mindful, still stay present, still stay mobile and you know what's while really, I get jacked And what's fuck. really interesting too is I just realized what we've been doing this whole podcast is we talk about them being worlds, two worlds. Yeah. The, in reality, that it's it's not. It's all the same, mm-hmm. right? If your goal is optimi- optimization and enjoying uh, your living, um, that it doesn't. It's not one world or the other world or this one over here, or that one over there. It's it's the whole. It's all right. It's the whole yeah. thing. It's about optimizing uh, the entire thing, which means you're going to focus on. At times, you're going to build lots of strength mm-hmm. or power or some of that stamina that you need, that intense stamina. Yeah, how do you keep the integrity in your joints while you're like, doing that process? All, all that's integrated. All of it. All yeah. of this stuff, like maximum performance, but also, you know, I, I, I you know, uh, Paul Check was an example of this. The dude kind of can do it all. Um, and uh, I find that, and he does it all very comfortably. Mm-hmm. And um, he's been practicing this, obviously, for a very, very long time. Um, so it'll be cool. It'll be cool to see, man your your progress pictures and what you can manipulate and change and how your body can you know from a um, from a visual standpoint and you know what people will see it's also going to be interesting to see if you go with going through it this this time uh if you how you can not develop imbalances uh, along the way yeah that that to me is the most important of all the things that i i want like i because i I do want to say, you know, in going back to the Insta story and, you know, hollering out the crunchy hippie thing, and I'm sure I've <laughs> offended people. Uh, That's your first time offending people. <laughs> right. What's wrong with you? There, there's some things that, I mean, I'm, I'm in some of the best. It's great, right? I, there's, I've been able to say this several times now that I'm in the best something of my life, <laughs> you know, and right, right now I'm in the, the best, like, mobile shape of my life Mm -hmm. like i am uh i'm my low back pain is gone completely uh my knees don't ache uh my 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 toe even by the way my toes are touching and gripping the ground is different like i have such better connection and to all of my muscles it's crazy i can see and feel a huge difference in that and i know that that's because of all the work that i put in and i hope that I can make sure I keep practices in place while now I shift my focus. Because even though they are not separate worlds, it is all one world, they are different focuses and some of them are conflicting with each other. You know, So building a ton of muscle is conflicting with being super hyper mobile. So you know, how do I live in both worlds or how do I meld them together um, will be exciting. It'll be fun. Uh, and I love challenges. I love challenging my body. I love learning about my body. So, uh, going after this with, I don't have to be on stage, so I don't have to be so focused on just the way I look. Well, that's cool. Cause then you don't have to go so extreme with your diet. Right. That's your, yeah. Right. So I get to, but I do want to chase that. I even, I even thought about, uh, looking into some of the big shows that are coming up and mirroring uh, a prep so people could follow, the, even though I don't, I don't have any plans to get it on stage, but mirroring what we'll a crash pre- an event. You just, <laughs> just peel down. Yeah. Just, in the have one of those breakaway uh, outfits, you know, <laughs> well, I was, Adam Schaefer. I was, I was telling Katrina, I was like, ah, you know, maybe I'll get in a show, you know, yeah. like maybe I'll drop in. I'll she's be your like, fluffer. She's like, are you stupid or what? I'm like, what? <laughs> she's a, 
She's like, you know what's going to happen to you. She's like, you've been disconnected. You've been out of the circuit now for over a year. They're not going to place you above the top 10 or 15. You're going to get a horrible placing no matter how great of a physique you bring. Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> like, well, I wouldn't care. I'm not, I'm not going to go win first place. Like, I'm not trying to get God, in. she said the wrong thing to you. Knowing you yeah, as well right. as I do. Oh, that's, like the, God, that's, like when Adrian, right. that's like when Adrian told Rocky, you can't win when yeah, he's going to fight the Russian. You right? yeah, right. shouldn't do it. Anytime. Can I just tell you, listeners, right now, Female listeners, yeah, don't say okay. you can't. Don't challenge your man's ego by telling him he can't do something because yeah. odds are he's going to try harder. And yeah. if you really think he's going to get hurt or something, you're better off just telling him like, "Hey, listen, you whatever you want to do, that. you need to hire it out." Well, um, I would. Um, yeah, I'm going to fix that. Considering she's a <laughs> consider, considering she's a ninja, I wouldn't put it past her to intentionally have done that just exactly. so she could see that. I'm sure it benefits her when I'm walking around naked looking like that, brother. <laughs> these, are, these are the <laughs> smart. Sure, it's not hard for her to look at that. So smart sure. ladies <laughs> have picked <laughs> up on this. Yeah, I'm sure that's a, probably it. a ninja move. God totally. Damn it. You know, I wanted to. Uh, I uh, somehow we landed here. And I guess a, a transition or a segue into, uh, you know, the training too hard or over intensity. Or yeah, that's a great topic, actually. How are you going to know? Uh, and I'll ask both you guys because I know Justin is uh, he's also voiced that he's going to kick up. You've been doing this now for two weeks now or a week or so mm -hmm. where you've I've seen your workouts and you're doing some pretty intense stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a lot like Adam. I'm trying to like really slowly, like gradually uh, ramp up the volume, I think, is is the big factor for me because um just knowing that <clears throat> like the the change of environment and the change of us like moving to this lo location i know the volume has gone way down and um i've been expressing uh strength but i've been more experimenting with different types of movement and like trying to figure out like what my body's capacity is and so now the focus is okay let's let's get back to barbell training let's get back to um you know some more intense movements compound movements that um you know i want i want to take it i want to take it step by step and 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 still apply this this long end range of motion Tense work, so mm. I have strength in in that movement and its quality. So I guess my my I'm taking it like a skill. So like if I'm I'm working on a squat, I'm I'm really hyper focused on what I'm doing with that squat, and uh, and I'm ramping up that intensity, and I'm trying to to to, to max and, and peak on that intensity. Well, let's so let's for people who are going to follow along, because I, I guarantee you there's going to be listeners who are like, cool, I want to do this, you know. Also, I want to start ramping things up. What is what are some signs that you guys personally look for uh, that tell you when you're working out too hard or too much? You know what I mean? Like when mm. do you know? Okay, I need to scale it back a little bit to maximize you know my body's progress. Yeah, when it sort of starts to detract from your like the next day. Like I feel like I my energy levels have completely. Oh. Uh, diminished, you know, to where even if I'm doing a trigger session, I sometimes I can feel like, you know, I I feel fried. Like I just feel like I don't have um, <clears throat> the the type of uh, energy or or motivation like I normally would. Whereas if I look at it more, like I, I want to ramp up my intensity, sure, but I still I don't want that to detract from. Um, you know, building up that volume. So, so you feel you feel, you'll notice the next day that you'll feel um a l like instead of like okay, I worked out real super like real hard today, and then it's the next day, and now I'm feeling kind of run down. Run and down. That's when you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, see, that's funny because Justin and I are like will use the opposite things to give us feedback on that. So what I'll do is I will actually I'm I'm trying to do as little as possible. Mm -hmm. So. I, and you got to be clear with that as little as possible to elicit change. That's it. So yeah. this is so, and I look at it at snapshots for the week. So for me, so Justin is probably more likely to overdo it, listen to his body the next day and say like, whoops, a little bit too much. I need to back off. Mm -hmm. I'm more likely to underdo it and oh, go, I Hey, see. next week I need to kick it up a notch. How do you know that? I, I take snapshots of the week. So I'll look at a, I'll look at a week. So then, you know, this is, this will be a better conversation in about a week or two when I actually have a week or two mm -hmm. under the belt because mm -hmm. then I can give people more specific numbers like X amount of steps and this is how many where my calories are, yada, yada. 
So you'll be doing this all on your Instagram page, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, mind, I'm pump, mind yeah, pump Adam. I'm already sharing the story right now. Cool. You guys uh, got to watch. I tell you what, if you're into, you know, if your goals are aesthetic based and you want to build muscle and kind of burn body fat, um, Adam yesterday posted his macro count. He's posting. I'm assuming you're going to post pictures of your progress, like. It'll yeah, be it'll be cool to yeah, follow. It's only been a, a week, so I don't yeah. have any great progress. Well, this is the best time to start, though, yeah, right? No, well, start I, following I'm, the process. I'm logging everything, though. Yeah, you know? So I so I, you, you I have picture. I'll take pictures. I take pictures every day, so I give myself feedback. But I'm not going to post that every day. That's ridiculous. No, but then you're like you're posting. Yeah, like I'll share. I'll share everything. Excellent. Um, but so what, what I'm doing is I'm always going to lean on the less volume, less intensity side, and then if a week goes by. If I see no progress in my my pictures, my scale, oh. I look, so I'll use that as my feedback. I'll look at my I'll look at my picture. I'll look at my scale. I'll look at my strength. I'll look I'll look at all those things and say, am I stronger? Do I look better? Is where's my is my weight up or down this week? Now, based off of that, going into this next week, I will either ramp up intensity and or volume and or keep the same depending on the feedback that I'm given. So I'm more likely, which is very common for me during this process of trying to figure out right where I need to be. I'm I'll have a week where, you know, a week goes by and I go like, fuck, I look exactly as the same as last week, which is mm-hmm. totally normal. And I tell people that's okay. Mm-hmm. And I would rather bode on that side than the other side of going, pushing it too fast, too hard. I'm, I lean more towards, I'm going to do little and then hey next week looks like no real change now i'm going to add this into my routine or restrict from this and based you know and and i'll make those adjustments every week whether it be calories steps or just flat out volume now are there any red flags like oh shit that was a little too much like or you know i think i need to back off on this or whatever uh a large swing on the scale oh i see that's What, what do you consider large uh, well, my body when I'm drinking, yeah, when I'm drinking a gallon of water plus a day, um, my body easily fluctuates six to eight pounds through the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if I Jesus, saw- that's quite a big that's a quite a big fluctuation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I said that in Italian accent. That's a quite yeah, a big a fluctuation. A fluctuation. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I I get up and pee three times in the middle of the night. It's really annoying. I have a tiny bladder, so she wore a diaper. <laughs> I thought about that actually. Uh-oh. Katrina wasn't really excited about that <laughs> idea. I could get yeah. kinky. Trust She'd me. have to change. Yeah, it. she was down for like a night like of role playing like that, but like a constant Adam, thing like I that wouldn't be cool. Seat. <laughs> I yeah. made a duty. Yeah, like, yeah this yeah. isn't that cool. God, that's weird. Not if I'm into changing your diaper. Yeah, no. So if I see a a huge shift, which which for me won't happen because I'm pretty in tune with my body, even though a lot of things, and I think this is important to note, um, you know, I mentioned before I was doing Orange Theory and all these steps. So now that we're doing just the podcast in here, I haven't tracked since we were just doing the podcast. Mm. So I'm actually really interested to see what a week of like stepping and moving. I have a feeling I'm extremely low in comparison. Like I think we've had some. So you put your Fitbit on. I'm yeah. I'm already wearing. Oh, it. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm already wearing it. So once I get that feedback, that will give me a really good idea. Because I it's crazy, but and this is why I think this part is so important. Is I can easily go from three thousand to five thousand calories consuming in a day. And they all be good and okay, like depending on where my activity level mm-hmm. is. Because I can easily be a day that we didn't do shit all day long and only burn about 2,800 calories. Yeah. And then I could have a day that we go hike San Antonio. We have a leg training session. I, You know what I'm saying? Katrina and I go for a walk to walk the dogs. Next thing you know, I'm at 20,000 steps. I burn 5,000 some calories. And, you know, my my macros should reflect that somewhere in my week. It mm-hmm. should change and fluctuate based off my activity. Well, so, so, wow, you guys are kind of motivating me right now. This sounds kind of fun because mm. I, I've already started incorporating more regularly. Well, uh, rewind a little bit. Um, I was dealing with some pretty interesting autoimmune kind of gut issues like, like I did way back in the day for like three weeks and it was really bothering me. And I'll tell you something right now, for anybody who has gut issues, they all understand you can't focus on anything but that. You can't, like you just don't progress. You don't progress in your training. You don't progress in almost anything. You just feel like shit. It's so connected to your your physical performance, your mind, your sleep, your attitude. Uh, it's really annoying. I'm on a protocol now that I think is addressing the issue, and I'm f- starting to feel really good. And now that I'm feeling good, I started doing my old school like MAPS anabolic trigger sessions, which 
Every single time I do trigger sessions consistently, I'm always, always blown away by how much of an impact they make on my aesthetics. It's it really blow every single time I do it, it blows me away because I'll do them consistently. So three for me consistently is three times a day on my non heavy workout days, and I'll see it that day. Literally that day, I'll notice in the mirror my muscles look fuller, and within two or three days of doing them. I notice that I just look more sharp. Sharp would be the right term, I think. I just my muscles look fuller and more defined. So I've already been doing that because I've been feeling better. But you guys are kind of motivating me to, you know, want to, I don't know, train uh, for. And for me, it just means just getting leaner, like getting a little bit more shredded. It's a but, good time. It's summer right yeah, here, man. We're yeah, getting, we're we're gonna be around pools. We're yeah. gonna be taking some trips. We'll be out in Vegas. We're gonna be out in Florida real soon. Here. Oh, by the way, that reminds me. Mm, uh, yes. Oh, good. Yeah, there you go. We're gonna be out in Tampa, Florida. We're gonna see. We're gonna see Lane Norton. We're gonna see Ben Pawlowski. P- Pawlowski. Pawlowski. So we'll be out there with the M140 gym. That crew. I'm um, really excited to do that. We're going to be there for a good four or five days. So if you're a listener, you have a podcast, you're out there, um, or you guys have some recommendations of people you know that yeah. live out there. We will be on as many podcasts as we possibly can in the area. So if you know podcasts that are located in that area, shoot, let us know. Actually, who should they email? Uh, admin? You can go to no, info, info at mindpumpmedia.com, you or you guys can just go to the Instagram and hit Mind Pump Media, the DM Excellent. over there. Taylor can get on top of that. But just, it's the Tampa area. So just remember, Florida's a big fucking state. So if it's, <laughs> yeah. that's, you know, if it's seven hours away, okay, that's not, I mean, I, I appreciate the love. No, right in that area. Yeah, we'll be around the Tampa yeah. area. Or so anywhere within an hour or two yeah. from that area, I'm sure we can make yeah. a, a connection over there. So we'll be doing that. Cool. Thanks for that, Adam. Yeah. Um, so, so back to the whole training too hard thing. Uh, for me personally, I notice if I train too hard, um, I feel uh, I'll start to feel it in my joints. Yeah, I start to get a little bit like achy. Yeah, yeah in the too. connective tissue mm-hmm. because my tendency is a little is is a little unique in the sense that my tendency when I'm going too hard is I start pushing the weight. A lot. I start lifting more and more and heavier and heavier because if if my ego gets attached to anything with resistance training, it gets detached you just said to something, strength. You just said something that's a really good point that I want to point out that I didn't mention that I'm doing also because of this. I feel like a lot of people, and you, I'm sure you can agree with this, you're, this is probably you and me, is tend to stick in a modality or phase in our in when talking about maps like our favorite that you love yeah. Yeah. heavy the heavy one to five range right yep. Yep, yep, yep. so i'm actually when i'm starting black right now i'm starting in phase three mm. even though our program is designed to take you through one two and three and that's because it's the opposite phase of what i've been gravitating towards for the last mm-hmm. six plus months it wouldn't make any sense to go phase one <clears throat> exactly so yeah. if people understand that that and this is really a great way for you to uniquely use maps because maps has all the programs have either three or four phases so it's almost like there's three programs built into one and if you are somebody right now who you are like a strength guy you love or girl you love lifting one to five repetitions then i would start you in like a phase three Mm -hmm. and if you're somebody who's more like the bodybuilder type where you love supersets high intensity working out and you're lots 10 to 15 rep range and you get on one of the maps programs i would then start you for sure in phase one Mm -hmm. so based off of what you do most of the time if you want to see the maximum results from the program I would start in an opposite phase than what you normally. That's just what's going to get your body changing, you know. Otherwise, your body's not going to change if you stay in the same thing all the time. And for me, right, uh, I you know, and again, you know, it's it's a constant check. But when I start to lift heavy and I start to get strong, nothing excites me more or feeds my ego more than that feeling. I just identify. I tend to identify with it, right? Yeah. And uh, I'll push it, and I'll start to feel. I'll start to feel it in my joints. I'll start to feel a little stiffness in my hips mm-hmm. or in my elbows. And I can always warm up real well, prime real well, make it go away for a second, and then go push uh, that weight again. And then my diet will start to reflect it to where I start to push, you know, certain things in my diet like, you know, more cholesterol, more, you know, proteins and saturated fats, which tend to make me feel, you know, really, really strong. So I'm trying to keep that in check. And, and for me, if I'm being smart and I'm being aware with my training, uh, I I really can do a good job with this if I'm if I'm really trying to pay attention to. And it's that 
I should feel good. I should feel good after my workout. I should feel good the day after my workout. I should feel great in my everyday life. I shouldn't feel like, like you were saying, Justin, we're like, we're sitting here recording and I'm like, oh, damn, like hurting or hammered. Oh my God, I'm so sore. Or you know what I mean? I, I should feel like, wow, I feel fantastic. I got lots of energy. My mood is good. Sleep is a big one. One thing that I notice if I train too hard, I can't sleep. It's almost like I'm too amped hmm. to go to bed, even though I, I know I'm tired. So if my sleep isn't feeling good, like all these are, are, are really good signs that, you know, you know, I, I need to kind of scale back on something or start to switch gears. So yeah. this is going to be fun. I think I'll, I'll, you know. Yeah. Well, you bring up a, a good point. Like, and that's when I was talking about like squat and kind of getting back into the, the skill of it. Like I'd, I am the same where I get excited that I'm lifting heavy again. And so um, sometimes you get disconnected as you're doing the lift. And my my focus completely with this process going back into intensity and intensifying these lifts is to stay connected throughout the entire rep range. Mm-hmm. And that's really a challenge because lifting heavier weights, you tend to disassociate – you tend to to get into the rhythm of it and the momentum of it, and and you want your mechanics to kind of uh, produce what you want to produce, and then just move. you know generate as much <laughs> force as you can, and just move it off of you, right? Uh, which is like it's really challenging to um, you know keep keep that tension, keep that connectivity, uh, you know, throughout that entire rep range. So. You know, as I'm loading the plates and as I'm ramping myself up, I'm I'm trying to check that. So I haven't earned the next plate yet mm. because I felt myself get disconnected in any portion of that lift. So uh, anyway, that's something that I, I want to like throw out there is um, like as I'm benching, as I'm overhead pressing, as I'm deadlifting, is you know anything that I'm adding and, and I'm plate loading where I'm like, oh fuck, I'm strong. Mm. I'm gonna go heavier. Um, did I earn that weight yet? Did did I do the full range of motion that I've been working on so hard to establish and and connect to so and control and control with no bounce or anything like that? Right, right, yeah. right. Because you know, like even I notice, like as I'm as I'm, I'm connecting to at the bottom of my squat, like am I engaging first, like driving my my feet and then and then connecting my my hips and my glutes and establishing that first and then driving out, or am I just pushing, you know, and or then leaning. Out. Yeah. And, and watching my knees, it's, you know. Now, Justin, are you doing the nutrition side as well? Is that changing for you during this process or? Um, I'm, I'm not counting macros, but I'm, I'm still, I'm still extracting dairy. And so I'm, I'm, I'm doing sort of more of an elimination reintroduction. Mm. Um, and so that was the first, uh, uh, um, item that I'm focusing on. Just the next one, yeah, is going to be uh, more gluten focused. And now, and have you noticed anything from cutting dairy out yet? I have. I have. Really? Yeah. Sorry. I know it sucks. What's your favorite, it's, dude? <laughs> dude. Like cheese is my my il nana, right? It's it's the it's the one. But I was just doing it. I, I feel like it was it was too frequently falling into my diet, you mm-hmm. know, like I just, it was just there too often. So extracting it, I feel less inflammation. I feel, wow. um, you know, like I still have a, a bit of heartburn on occasion, but I noticed that, um, like, uh, I definitely have less inflammation. So that's I, excellent. I, that, that's yeah. Apparent. Yeah. For, for me, for nutrition, it's my nutrition doesn't dramatically change usually, but I was pushing the shit that I know I should doesn't really work with me well too a little too frequently before, which is why I think I fell into, you know, where I wasn't feeling good. Like I would have, you know, pasta here or, you know, I'd have a treat here or there or, you know, I threw in, you know, uh, a little bit, tiny bit of dairy or things that I know bother me. And I just became a little bit too frequent, I think, for my body. And I got a little cocky. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, you know, I'm just being very, very good about eliminating the things that I know just don't serve me well. Um, and, uh, that's basically what I've, what I've changed so far. So you this know, is going to be fun to watch. Yeah, no, it will be, you know, circling back to the, the main topic of, you know, the over, over intensity thing is, you know, and what, why I sent that message to the group text last night that I really wanted to talk about it was I just had been going through my feed and I'd seen a lot of these like young guys and like, you know, 
pushing pushing each other and and it's like I, I get the it, it, the athlete side, you know, because you, you you feed off that energy of another guy. Oh, five more! Come on, push more of this. Yeah, yeah. And but I see these, and these guys were the ones that I'm I'm, I'm referring to right now, were in their early twenties, uh, young, athletic, really fit guys that are you know trying to keep building muscle, building more muscle. And I'm watching like their training and how they're training their buddies and everyone working out, and I'm going like, man. If you only knew, like, if you'd like scaled back on that and kind of found a better balance, that you your body would just explode and grow. And when you just train the fuck out of it, intensity wise, like that, people don't realize how in how smart the body is, man. It's crazy how quick it gets you used to what you're throwing at it. And when you throw everything at it really early on in your training it gets adapted to that and then to to take it to the next level requires so much more and then eventually you just run out you run out of intensity and time you know you you can only add so much volume in an hour or two hour of your workout to where then eventually you end up doing what a lot of these guys do which is double days and all that stuff when you're trying to build muscle you, all those extra calories that you're burning just makes it that much harder for you to to replenish the body with the nutrients that you need to now then refuel, grow, repair, and you just into this vicious cycle of you know what we you recall the you know recovery breakdown where you're just con- constantly stuck in this trap of hammer, 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 recover, recover, hammer, hammer, recover, and then you're you're never letting the body fully. You're never recover. growing. You're never adapting. Yeah, it's just recover from the damage, mm-hmm. and then and then damage yourself again. And people confuse recovery with adaptation, so they think, oh, I got sore, muscle recovers, now it's going to build and get stronger. No, not not necessarily. Many times, all it does is just heal, and in extreme cases, if you continue to tear down and, and, and you know tear things down, it doesn't even fully recover. So you actually start to go negative. But at best, if you're not sending a signal that's telling your body to adapt by building muscle, you're just staying in the same spot. You're just tearing down, building up, tearing down, building up, tearing, and they never go any further. And a lot of people are stuck in this. A lot of people go to the gym. And it's the same thing week in and week out, and they're at best they're maintaining. Yeah, they're just at getting. Best. They get really efficient at the the workout they're doing, and then in their head it's like, oh, it's it was so difficult and so hard. I'm so glad it's not at that like it was during week one and week two. But in reality, like I'm always kind of seeking that feeling, mm-hmm. and that's you got to be you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that's whole part of like maps and the idea of the phasing and never allowing you to stay in a certain phase for longer than three or four weeks is just when you start to get really good at that workout. You change and, it. Yeah, you change it and you get uncomfortable again. Mm-hmm. And it's tough. It's a very hard transition, you know, to to go when you just start feeling like hitting your stride that, yeah, that workout was easy. I'm throwing them 100 pound dumbbells up like nothing. Yeah, but what you're seeking is growth. Right. And that's the formula for growth. Mm-hmm. Right. So and if here, you stray away from that, then you're not going to grow. Now, it's here's something. Simple. Here's something that I want to try as, when I have the time to do so because we know how frequency and you know greasing the groove, as Pavel will call it, or practicing exercises, is an effective tool to build muscle and get stronger. And what I mean by that is like rather than going you know balls out squats, you know for a workout, uh, you could squat with less intensity every day and practice that technique. And you, be, especially if it's a change for you, you'll find your strength and muscle will go up as a result. Here's something that I was thinking about. I was actually talking about this with uh, Jessica. She's going to do this with me. When we have the time, what we want to do is we want to pick like three lifts, like squat, uh, you know, overhead press, and maybe a pull up or something like that, right? Or a deadlift or something kind of a hip movement, an upper body movement, and then something else. And what we want to do is every hour on the hour, do a single set of each of those exercises at a medium intensity. Like, and do this for like, 10 hours or eight hours throughout the day. Like take a break, eat a little bit, go back. Here we go. One set of squats Say mm-hmm. and try to match every hour is the same. So if I pick a weight and I pick a rep range, I do that same thing throughout the day. The goal isn't high intensity. The goal is not to go to failure or super fatigue myself. It's just to do this crazy practice throughout the day and see what happens. And I have some theories. I, I, one of my theories is I'll feel like my performance will increase within that day kind of midday, like by the fourth hour, I'll probably feel really strong and then maybe start to see some fatigue. But I really want to see what will happen by pushing that. So I've kind of played a little bit with that, not to that level, 
It's like trigger sessions times a million, right? Right. Well, like where you just kind of like so I kind of thought of like breaking the maps workout up over the entire day. Mm-hmm. Instead of like it being all in one hour, it's like I'll do three workouts today that are quarter the size, right? Or four workouts quarter the size and just mm-hmm. those and then move on. It'd be interesting to see how that little 15-minute sessions. The thing that I wonder that you were like, uh, I can see where it could really benefit strength, mechanics. I wonder if there's any drawback of not allowing um, – the the pump enough of the enough of blood into the same muscle group area. Oh Do yeah, it's definitely not going to be uh, aesthetically ideal. Well, it might be if because it's a change. Yeah, right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No, that's a great point. Yeah. That's yeah. a great yeah. point because yeah, yeah, you've yeah. never done that. It, it, that that's the part. So I've. Thought, it's also going to require all fucking day. And yeah, you need yeah, to be yeah. next to so that's a, well, lot of a gym or something. You know right? what? Well, what would make this? And I've talked about this with Katrina. And I actually discussed this because like, we were talking about actually doing pulling a, a page out of Juji's book. I have this big, huge uh, living room. In dining room area that we don't really use. And I thought, what if we put like a platform and a squat rack that's there, it. so I could deadlift and squat and overhead press right there. Yeah. Like, and then I just start because that's what we're going to do. We're yeah, in the garage. yeah. And then just actually just throughout the day, like, hey, let's go get let's go get get a set or two of squats in real quick, and then we'll come back later on. And we'll get some deadlifts in. Yeah, and just exactly. kind of sporadically throw. Yeah, we've talked about doing this, and I'm I'm curious and what that looks like and we may do that so I'll, I'll keep people posted I know we have it here so you, I kind of have done that's what I meant but by but you'd like, have to be here all day yeah that's the thing it'd be cool if it was at home and you're like hey let's just chill at home all day mm-hmm. we'll watch movies in between you know we could do our we could do a set every and of course you know it doesn't it, it, it helps that my girlfriend is a fanatic about it as well so we'll have fun while we're doing it mm-hmm. but I, I i mean it would be impossible without that in your home right well, otherwise you're going to have to like what park ha- your car outside the gym go in your car in between or i don't know live in the gym all day well what i have done is that like i say i've kind of meddled in it a little bit is like a, we'll get here early and i'll kind of do a couple exercises not even really break a sweat cuz i'm only doing one or two things then before we leave here i do another one or two things and then i actually go to the gym later on in the night and then i basically like i said breaking up the maps uh programming in three different workouts and it's funny because you don't really break a hard sweat. It doesn't seem like it's really, really challenging, but I accomplished the same amount of volume. So what I did notice was I didn't see a loss. I for sure didn't go back. It's backwards. challenging the frequency model uh, even further. You know what I mean? It's taking it to the next level and really, because think about it. If I'm doing, because I did the math, right? I said, okay, if I do eight hours of this, where at the beginning of the hour I do this, and I do, you know, two sets per exercise. That's it. Just two sets of squats, two sets of overhead press, two sets of pull-ups. I'm doing 16 sets of those of those exact same exercises throughout the whole day, which is more volume than I normally would have done. Way more volume than I normally would have done with those exercises. So, but because it's an it's like, you know, an hour in between, I'm not going to get the same kind of fatigue. So, it's taking the maps philosophy and just making it super extreme and it very well may, may be too much and very well me you know do it and then afterwards be like well that didn't work well or I, it could be something cool to i do definitely every once in a while. I, well there's some there's some really cool benefits i i think that there are with this and even though i haven't done it all all the time with the weights i also follow this like uh idea of moving after i consume and this is something katrina and i were talking about this oh, after you eat food yeah so oh, and she's like you got to share this on the podcast she goes i've never really thought about that until you just shared that with me so here you go so when we were wa- we went to your breakfast spot over by your uh, lost out your old abs. Oh yeah, 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 next to my old. And gym. we did your little walk. I, I went back to the houses, and her and I walked afterwards. Oh, it's a great walk. And so we're talking while we're back there, and I said, you know, have you ever thought about like how what we've evolved to now? Like where think about the average American probably eats anywhere between two to four meals in a day. Uh, and some probably a lot of people are driving on, on a commute and shoveling something in their mouth, or they sit at a restaurant and eat somewhere. Have you ever thought like and, and I've told I've told people this before that if we actually got outside the average American walks about 4000 steps a day. If you were to go outside and you were to walk for 1 hour, you would accomplish about 8000 steps. So that means that the average American doesn't even step for 30 minutes <laughs> consistently through the day. Now think of this. That's horrible. That means the average American spends more fucking time consuming than they do moving. To the minute, when you think about that. Oh yeah. So think, put that into perspective. Like, and think if you actually just made an e- a conscious effort. More people probably spend time on the toilet. Well, think if you just <laughs> made a, a conscious effort I to know I do. time. And I know this sounds ridiculous, but this is what I said to her. I said, imagine if we like, you know, we sat down at the restaurant. As soon as we sat down at the restaurant, I hit the stopwatch and just let the time go. Like, you know, oh, we wait, we order our food, we consume our food, we relax, we coffee, this and that. Boom! I look at the stopwatch, and you know, thirty-two minutes goes by. 
What if I just walked and moved for the same amount of time that I actually sat to fucking eat? Mm -hmm. What would that do? What would that what would that do from a calorie expenditure and how much would that negate everything that I'm actually taking in and what a difference that could make? Oh, that would be huge. Not to mention uh, from a cultural standpoint, all of the ancient cultures, all of the old cultures of the world where they've had societies for a long time, it is embedded in their culture and in some of them in part of their religions even to go for a walk after you eat. Now, I know in the Mediterranean, like my family's from Sicily, right? After you eat, it's like that's what you do. You eat, Mm -hmm. and then you go for a walk with people. In Asian cultures, they go for a walk, you know, uh, and and it doesn't have to be like if you look at like Chinese cultures where they they'll eat their meal and then they'll go for a walk afterwards. It's not like they're you know they're they're cruising real fast. It's real slow, you know, kind of nice walk. And this is kind of cool if you look at uh, all these old cultures and look at some of the things that they have embedded in their cultures. Many of the reasons why they have these things embedded is because they have health benefits, and that's why they became a part of their culture. The health benefits of walking after you eat, Adam touched upon the calorie burn, but besides that... The digestive process, too. The digestive pro- Look, at first of all, uh, astronauts many times have issues with digestion in space because of lack of gravity. Mm-hmm. The reason why your butthole is, <laughs> is at the bottom of your body mm-hmm. and your mouth hole is at the top of your body is because gravity assists in the... A digestive process, and if you don't believe me, hang yourself upside down for two days and see oh, how many God. times you poop. Okay, <laughs> or just hang yourself upside down and eat. How uncomfortable that sounds! Yeah, right. That so, just sounds uncomfortable. You'd be thrown up poop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's a very important part of the digestive process is gravity and moving, exercising and moving. By the way, uh, there's hip flexors, the psoas, for example, that travels through the body and literally is in and around your digestive organs and many times inflammation in your gut will cause hip problems because it affects the psoas and vice versa psoas issues can cause digestive issues especially if it's inflamed because it's all in that same vicinity so walking and moving and using those hip flexors tissue actually it actually encourages the digestive system to move and to digest food moving encourages the production of Stomach acids. And I know people are like, oh, I have heartburn. I have too much acid. Not true. Usually heartburn is a result of too little acid uh, in the gut. And so you get this kind of rebound effect. So walking and moving post-meal is uh, a crucial part of effective digestion. And some people, especially those that are on the more constipated side, notice that it goes away if they go for a 10 or 15 minute walk. Well, post and meal. you think you think it's so crazy how backwards we are now because we evolved our entire life lo- for the, you know thousands of years having to travel miles and hike forever to find and scavenge food, right? Then you get it, you consume as much as you can, and then the next day you get up and you do the same thing again. You hike and you go forever, and maybe if you're lucky, you find food that day, maybe you don't. And then, like, you're, there's very little time is spent actually sitting and consuming. We're so the opposite that we barely fucking walk and ever have to move. And all we do is sit down and consume. It's so ass backwards. How many, uh, how many uh, yoga classes uh, have you guys taken? Total? Yeah, like, like you've been in a class. Like an uh, actual class? Five, maybe, maybe five? Yeah, like yeah. three. Have you guys ever noticed, this is a big joke with yoga instructors, you ever hear like people farting? In class, totally. It's, it's a big thing, like, like, they'll, and they'll Especially tell you old ladies. And I remember, I when I took my first class, I heard a couple, you know, yeah. and I'm like, oh shit, Brrr. and it even happened to me. And the yoga instructor's always like, hey, that's totally normal. Yeah. It's part of yoga. It's part of movement. It gets things moving. And I thought that was hilarious, but it's it's absolutely true. Like, movement encourages digestion. It encourages things to move through the body. It is, uh, it it makes perfect sense. And by you know. Here's the other thing too. You know when you eat sometimes and you feel kind of sluggish and like, oh, I feel like I want to take a nap. If you walk after you eat, you just don't get that. No, you, feel you, just awesome. do, you feel awesome. We so always feel so that's good. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm that's, glad you brought that up. Yeah, it's kind of crazy when you think about it, though, when you put it into perspective like that. Like, whoa. Yeah, this is a simple thing. That's a trip, yeah. right? Like, do we literally spend more fucking time on our ass shoveling into our mouth than we <laughs> actually just do walking to get the food, whatever? That's, and it's so backwards. I'm going to open way. a restaurant where. 
you pick whatever you want to eat and then we put you in a room with that food and now you have to catch it and kill it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I want a burger. Here's your cow. You know, fucking yeah, not, uh, not a lot calorie deficit, bro. Even though you had a double uh, burger, you actually burned 3,000 calories. Trying well, to you that. remember, I think this was just like, uh, this was when we first started uh, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, that guy got all kinds of publicity for losing like a hundred and something pounds. And of course it was a, a commercial for Walmart. But the idea was kind of clever and smart, and that's why I think it got so much traction, was, you know, he ate at Walmart, you know, three times a day, but he had to walk. It was his Walmart was like two miles away. So it was two miles there, two miles back. Yeah. So he walked there, he consumed, then he walked back. It's the same walked. story with Jared. And right. then it, it, yeah, and all and the, what? <laughs> I don't know if it's the same story as Jared. It is. He went to walk to get his uh, foot long, and then he mm. walked somewhere. But that was all part of his process. And so, he, and he, then he, and he got into the, kids, and he walked past the school every day. Yeah, exactly. That's where, that's yeah. where it went all it, bad. It all yeah. went to hell. I'm sure he's getting plenty of foot long in jail right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. Uh, submarine. Uh, well, excellent. Uh, look, 30 days of coaching is available at mindpumpmedia.com, and it's free. Uh, it's a amazing resource for information on all things fitness and wellness. We've put a lot of time and energy into this, um, and it doesn't cost anything. You just go to mindpumpmedia.com, opt in, and you'll get all that information. Also, you can follow uh, Adam's uh, journey. Um, looks like he's trying to get super buffed again, and it's on his Instagram at mindpumpadam. My page is mindpumpsal. Justin is mindpumpjustin. And also, leave us a review on iTunes. When we like the reviews and we pick the best ones, those people get free t-shirts. So if you want a free t-shirt, we hook them up. Leave a review. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs> <laughs>